I sat down with everyone from the CEO to the marketing director. We did a little quiz. Which bits do you like of this report? Would you be interested in this, that or the other? If I displayed it in a different way, would that make it easier or more confusing? So we rebuilt some reports from there. It also gave a bit of GA training to them so that they could actually go to the right reports themselves. Hello, welcome to the Jumpstart Podcast with Jeff Lytics. I'm your host, Jeff Sauer. Today, for our 24th episode, we'll talk with Anna Lewis, Google Analytics Analyst at Wiggle in the UK. If you've been in the Google Analytics community for the past few years, then you may have come across Anna's name, participating in the Google Plus forum discussions, read some of her blog posts, or even saw her speaking at conferences about advanced analytics. Anna is a rising star in the UK analytics community, and my friend Doug Hall, who we might know as Fast Bloke on Twitter, told me that Anna would be a great guest for the show. I couldn't agree more. Anna started her marketing career in SEO, but quickly was drawn to the accountability of measurable channels like paid search. From there, analytics seemed like the perfect path of pursuit. Learn how Anna made the decision to pursue analytics, and also stay tuned for some other news that Anna has to share in today's update. Today's episode is sponsored by Supermetrics. Do you want to liberate your Google Analytics data? Use the Data Grabber tool from Supermetrics to send data into Excel or Google Sheets and save yourself tons of time in the process. With connectors to Google Analytics, Facebook ads, and many more of your favorite platforms, you can get the data you need without the hassle. Visit jefflytics.com supermetrics for more info. And now, on to Anna Lewis. For show notes, visit jefflytics.com slash Anna. Okay, so we're here today with Anna Lewis. Anna, thanks for joining us on the podcast. No problem. Great to talk to you. Yes. So I'd like to start off the podcast with a question uh, about you. And when did you know that, that analytics was a career for you? Was there a project you worked on or, or what were you doing that made you realize this is the right career path for you? I think it was a growing thing for me. Um, when I first got into uh, SEO and I first started to see the effect I could have on a website and all of the data, that really sort of lit the inspiration for my passion for actually tracking things correctly and getting all the data and knowing what's working and what's not working. It didn't then move into just working on analytics for another probably four or five years after that. So I was sort of doing the uh, doing the marketing but with a, a real passion for, for the data side of it for quite a while before I found the opportunity to actually move into an analytics role because there don't seem to be too many dedicated analytics roles around, um, yeah. particularly not where near where I live. So uh, Yeah, I think there, there are roles in big companies, but smaller companies are just starting to come around to the point where they realize the value of analytics. Yeah, it's very hard to prove to people they need it. <laughs> yeah, so how, so how does that work? You got out of university and then... Did you take a job right away in, in SEO then, or how did you find a job in SEO? I didn't know what SEO was when I went for the job interview, um, but that, that was what the job was for. So um, my degree was in uh, advertising, because I couldn't decide between doing an, a degree in accounting or a degree in creative advertising. Um, and then I found one that was uh, uh, balanced both the business and the creative sides of things. Um, so the degree in advertising had a big final project, and that um, you had to find a client and do an advertising brief for them. And the one that I found was um, one of my uh, friends was running a website. And um, so we took that on as our advertising project. And actually, he wanted some uh, online online marketing done. So that was where we learned about uh, what PPC and SEO are. Um, mm -hmm. And from there, I left university and, and started applying for junior marketing roles. Um so I found this one that was a junior online marketing executive role. Um, but actually, uh, the long-winded uh, job title uh, could have been summarized by just link builder. So mm -hmm. it, was, it was a little bit not quite what I expected, but actually it opened my eyes to this whole new world of SEO. And that's where I started using um, Google Analytics and started seeing that actually by doing a few things, you can make more money for companies. And that, yeah. that was... That was, yeah, just a magical moment, really. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I love that moment when you look at when you're doing something like link building or you're doing something like SEO and, and you're like, I think this is going to work, but I'm not sure. Like, uh, this may or may not work. 
I've read a million things about it. These things may work. And then analytics is really how you can tell. How did you, how can you can tell how much traffic you got, how, how you can tell pretty much anything about whether things are working because it's, it's tangible and it's measurable. And so I think that that's, that's how a lot of us work. I, I had the same, same thing happen to me. I was looking at analytics and just wanted to see the results and I, and that was the way to measure it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, from the background, um, the, the degree in advertising, they're like, well, you know, we think it made this much money in, with the traditional advertising. So to find that the, in the online world, you could actually measure it pound for pound. It was, um, yeah. yeah, I knew that that was, that was definitely the direction to take and that was the future. Great. And so how long were you in the, the SEO role before you started to really transition into analytics? Was that at the same job or was that in a new job you went to? Um, I definitely um, sort of learned, to, learned the fundamentals um, where, where I was. Um, but a couple of years after that, I moved to another company and started also doing the uh, PPC and SEO. And then a few months after I got there, I'd expressed a, a love of spreadsheets, um, which the uh, manager had picked up on. So when uh, a colleague who was the analytics specialist left, uh, they said to me, well, you love spreadsheets. Do you want to uh, <laughs> do you want to get into this analytics thing? I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, took that on, um, started um, running the analytics and testing things out on the company website and sort of troubleshooting for companies, uh, doing some additional uh, branding. So it was a, an SEO and PPC agency, um, but obviously mm-hmm. you need analytics in place and you need to know it's working um, in order to uh, do the work so that you can actually measure it. So we weren't actually um, giving clients analytics work at that stage, but um, mm-hmm. that was that was the long-term aim. And a couple of years down the line, we were able to take on some analytics clients, do some training. Um, and from there, really, um, I fell out with SEO, uh, you know, after about five years of doing it, I was just like, yep. no, yeah, our time has come. Um, I was much more into PPC and sort of seeing the exact results um, yep. and strategy, but really I just wanted to, to get into um, into the data. So when an opportunity for a uh, an analyst role came up at a large e-commerce company um, that, that was local, I, yeah, leapt at the chance. I wasn't looking for a new job, but when the right one comes up, you've got to go for it. Absolutely. That's a cool transition because basically, like, I can see see where that's coming from too, and that is, eventually, when you get into the data, it becomes addicting, right? To see <laughs> the results and to know how it's going, and then to to have that level of of control or input to say these are these are facts. We have these this data, and we have our spreadsheets that say this is what's going on. Let's let's do more of this. Let's get more of these customers. Let's do more of this activity. Yeah, absolutely. And to be able to say to people, actually, uh, what you thought you're looking at isn't quite right. But if you look at it this way, we can do this, that and the other. So yeah, the troubleshooting and the and the insights are both just so beneficial to businesses. Yeah, excellent. So, so you were at an agency and then now you're, I, I guess we call it in-house on an e-commerce yes. company. And so what do you do there? Is it long-term projects? Is it short-term projects? Um, it's crazy. It's everything. Everything you need for every little client, but on a big scale across all of the websites uh, globally and across multiple teams throughout the business. Mm-hmm. And it was it was a new role that I went into. Nobody had actually done it before. So I was taking over a sort of odd job account that, you know, people with a good bit of knowledge had, had managed to build it, but it was a little bit hodged together. Um, yep. So... Yeah, it was um, a case of tidying it up, fixing some bugs, making sure that all the new stuff they were adding to websites, little little widgets here or buttons here or banners there, were all being tracked well. Um, and then, so that was working with uh, so the, the, the people promoting the products and the developers who were doing that and the project teams. And then it's a case of making sure that the marketing teams can understand that data and then that the international teams also get a view of that data. And then also yep. escalating all of that to the senior uh, management and um, then also working out which bits of data need to go to the board and which bits are sort of critical, which ones they don't need to get flustered about. So mm-hmm. it's it's anything and everything to do with analytics, which was just fantastic, really. It was exactly exactly the work I was looking for. No, that's great. And, and you're in a place where you can make suggestions and, and make an impact because you, you're on the team, right? The team is, is invested in it. And I think that in the e-commerce world, you can measure those right away. Like if we make this change, we, we think we're going to get this type of impact. Yeah, absolutely. Within a few days, we could say, right, well, this banner is performing better than that banner. And why don't we put this one there? Or um, we would do split testing and the, the 
in-house developers built their own split testing tools. So we were able to yeah. run that. And um, yeah, there's there's immediate data. You know, PPC campaigns go live and you can sort of help the team work out whether or not they're working. Yeah. So it sounds like it's it's like a lot of businesses. And, and we, you know, you had said earlier there weren't very many um, web analytics type jobs out there. And I think that's pretty common because I think a lot of companies spend most of their time just figuring out what do we have here? Like, what what do we have on the web? And and uh, and figuring out how to even sell something at all. Like, how do we get any kind of sales? And so they're like, well, we need traffic. So traffic is SEO, it's PPC, it's those types of things. But eventually, as a company matures, they see value in analyzing it, the results. They see they can, you know, instead of spending more money always to acquire customers, let's be better at the efforts that we do have. Let's use analytics to get there. Is that sort of how your progression happened there? Or is that sort of describe what happened at this company when they brought in you as a full-time analyst yeah um there was there was definitely a sort of um a division between the, the data and and the activity people were sort of relying on the data but they didn't know enough about it to trust it enough uh, but they thought they could trust it and you know couldn't always so when things happen occasionally things crop up and you think something something and it turns out it's wrong so they were sort of yep. noticing various problems and they were noticing that there was too much to keep on top of um and a lot a lot to do so yeah from there they really found it useful to have one key person to go to um to say right can i trust this number you know how do i find this can we do this better and um yeah really understand better um what what the numbers were saying yeah so that so is that sort of the process you went through initially in starting this new role is that like take an assessment of everything that's in place does this make sense do we have the right data that's sort of a description of how you went about this how did you go about um, defining something that hadn't been defined before well it would have been good if I could have just you know sat down made a plan wrote it all down you know put the logic together for this that and the other uh, but on my first day they decided to relaunch um, the checkout um, so oh. I immediately got thrown in at the deep end and was sort of updating 50 odd goals across the account to uh, wow. make sure all the uh, sort of seven step funnels were then corrected to the right sort and putting new goals in. So um, there was, there's never really time to sit back and plan necessarily. Um, it's mm-hmm. all very go, go, go. It's um, there's a lot of fixing things with hindsight as well, uh, because the companies move so fast and don't always communicate with every department. They don't realize yep. that, you know, if they're putting a new thing on the website, they actually ought to put the tracking in properly so that they can then measure it. So we had quite yeah. a few instances where things would go live and I, and then people would come to me and say, is this working? I'd be like, <laughs> um, I wish I could tell you that, but I didn't know about it and nobody yeah. on the project's actually put any tracking on it. So you're going to have to come back in a month's time once we've actually tracked it. Yeah. So I, I guess that happens in house, just like it does as an agency. Because I, I, that happened to us a lot as agencies. Is always, you know, they launch something and then they say, "How do you measure this?" And we'd be like, "Well, you didn't tag it. You didn't have a plan on how to do it. So we can't get you that information. Maybe next time we can do that for you." Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of a lot of looking back. But um, the other thing that I did do, I managed the migration from Classic Analytics to Universal, um, okay. which was quite a large job oh i can imagine uh, yeah a whole new event um event naming conventions and um moving to google tag manager as well um and at the point i, th- I think we had about 30 or 40 custom dimensions as well so my yeah. all of those across and making sure it all worked um you know and was the same exactly the same or a much much better version because obviously yeah. people wouldn't take slightly different they wanted uh, yeah, exactly the same or no change at all. Well, that's quite the undertaking to, to do all that. How do you, how did you learn this? Was it mostly on the job? Did you, is it reading blogs, books? That's how did you get to the point? Where all on the job. Yeah. Um, yeah. If somebody says, how do I do this? And I don't know, um, we'll work it out. Um, yep. it's just a case of thinking, well, it's definitely doable. Um, somebody will have done it. And if I can't work it out just by digging around, uh, in the tool itself or within this, that and the other, I'll do some do some research and find some good blogs that can uh, help me work it out. And if I can't find it on a blog or online, I'll talk to somebody who's uh, cleverer than me or has more experience in that area and, um, yeah, and see if they can uh, give me some experience and, and assistance there. Yeah. Well, it seems like, I mean, especially in the UK, there's a great community of people willing to help and 
people sharing that knowledge. So it's not like you're, even if you're the only analyst on your job, you're not alone in having to go about these problems. Yeah, I couldn't have done it without other people. Yeah. Like being on, on the job on your own is, um, yeah, it's, it's not a good place to be. You, yeah. you need to know other people. Mm -hmm. So how did you get in, involved in that area? Was it starting with people you worked with at Guzai or was it just in general? Like, I, I think you and I met at, a, what, a measure camp? Yeah. Or a few things we've met at before, I believe. Yeah. And so how did you, it, it seems like you're pretty involved in the community. How did you, how did that start? So back in my first SEO job, um, there was literally uh, four of us. Um, who were doing this SEO thing. And I was like, what is this? I, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I can follow the, the guide they're setting me, but actually I want to know more. Is this the right way to do it? Is this an outdated method? So I took to Twitter um, and it was in its early days then, but I found it a massive resource for sort of finding people and things. And so I talked to a few people on there and then um, one of them happened to be setting up a little conference. Um, so I went along to the first Brighton SEO Oh, nice. Many, many years ago. Um, and there was about, well, 20 or 30 of us stood in a tiny pub room. Um, yeah, a little <laughs> room above a pub. And um, yeah, so from there, I was like, ooh, there's other SEOs in the world. And um, yeah, so started talking to people on Twitter and, and at the conference. And after going to that, I uh, just sort of committed myself to going to as many events and conferences as I could so that I could actually meet all these people who are out there and doing the same thing but who you know it's it's it is still a niche industry so you've got yeah. to get out there and talk to people so yeah definitely twitter and conferences are the uh, fundamentals and, and the foundation to where I've where I've ended up brighton seo think visibility measure camp measure vests even talking at things like uh smx and you know anything from a small to a large event yep you meet different people at different ones but i find they've all got their own value but yeah definitely like um conferences like measure camp the best because it is just uh, 200 geeks all talking about <laughs> the same thing in the same place and yep. the knowledge you can gain in just a 10 minute chat from somebody there because you're the you're like-minded people who are both knowledgeable and passionate about this this industry then actually um, basically anybody you talk to you can click with and, and have a conversation with and, and learn something and, and yeah. help them in some way as well so you're always giving back as well as, as learning yourself and meeting all these yeah. people who you can you know then meet around the world <laughs> absolutely I mean that's the cool thing about it right is that people are willing to share even more if you if you're in person and also it strengthens your relationship so you can like you said in a 10 minute conversation at at a measure camp or any one of these things in the hallway, you can really either ask the questions that you've been dying to ask and have, get somebody's opinion or form a relationship. And, and these people are, you know, they become real because because Twitter is, Twitter is a great way to sort of, you know, follow people and to understand where people are coming from. But the in-person experience, I think, is, is even better. It really does enhance things. Yeah, it takes respect. things to the next level, yeah. And actually, at the last measure camp I went to, uh, through a few conversations with people, that's given me the confidence to think, right, actually, I can go it alone. And yep. so uh, that's that's the next thing on the horizon, is, uh, is going to be working for myself at some point. Oh, wow. Is that a... <laughs> okay, are we breaking news here, or is that something that's sort of a... A known thing. <laughs> it's it's um, a, a slow, slow. I'm, I'm working up to it slowly. I uh, had a daughter last year, um, so I'm still on maternity leave, and I thought now is the opportunity to see whether or not I can, you know, get my freedom back. Um, not yep. not work for somebody else, and yep. um, actually then go to the conferences I want to because it's on my time. Um, <laughs> yeah, and that sort of thing. Yes. <laughs> so absolutely. Well, I, I think that's a good decision to make, and it's it's exciting, and it's. Um, I mean, one of the best decisions I ever made was the same thing, was to say, now is the time to do it and to go back yeah. and go out on your own. Yeah, it's scary, but it's also a cool opportunity. Yeah, very scary. And I'm not sure there's ever the right time to do it other than just at some point you have to say, right, I'm just going to do it. But, you know, at the stage where you're, you've got a small child, you're, you know, moving house or you've got, you know, bring up a, a family and that sort of thing and then you think well do I really want to be starting a business right now as well but if I don't do it now uh, when so yeah. yeah yeah that's that's my approach at the moment is um let's see, see if I can um yeah give it a shot by the end of the year maybe well that's exciting that's really exciting so um going out on your own is, is a big scary thing is there 
like, do you have an approach to it that you've been thinking about? Have you been talking to other people? Have you been sort of reading? I, obviously, you arrived at the decision because you've you're confident in your skills and your ability to deliver it. Is anything influenced that decision, or anything helped you out along the way? Because a lot of the listeners are people who are thinking the same thing. They're like, "I really someday I want to do this, but I don't really know when someday is." Yeah, it's been a long decision in the in the making. I've wanted to do it for a long time, but I've always thought, "Well, I need the experience. I need to learn from other people." and that sort of thing. But you, there's only so much you can learn from other people when you're in-house or client-side or, or in an agency because actually, you know, they're all learning amongst you at the same time. So yep. it's it's been a case of work out when we're financially stable enough to take yep. the punt. Obviously, being on maternity leave, we're down to one wage anyway. So <laughs> it's kind of like by the end of maternity leave, if I can be, you know, finding work that could uh, equal or... Um, be greater than one nursery fees and uh, two my previous wage um, yep. then then that's that's the one so at the moment we're sort of, uh, my daughter's eight months old so she's in nursery once a week now and I've decided to use that day a week to sort of start researching and just looking into it and seeing whether or not I can uh, pick up the business um, and what I've really been doing is is talking to these people I've met all these fantastic people who um, are working for themselves or in agencies or um, you know various different roles um, yeah there's there's people out there who don't know where to find you know um, smaller companies to to do a little bit of work or an expert for this that or the other so hopefully I can um, yeah help people out and um, and fit that that analytics need they're looking for yeah, absolutely. Well, I think that I mean, that this is the first step, right? Is to just let everybody know <laughs> that, that you're doing it. And um, that when I went out on my own, that was that's what I had to do too. Is just tell everybody that you know that you're open for business, whether that's it's on cool. Facebook or or on LinkedIn or anywhere, and just say, hey, if you have anything, you know that that you can that you need an expert, or if you want to, you know, if you ever thought about this, I'm I'm here. Yeah. And then you can sort of figure out how the business is going to operate, you know, whether, whether, you know, what type of clients to take on, what, what you should charge. There's all kinds of different considerations. Yeah. So I'm just trying to ramp up gently at the moment, you know, yep. one day a week, uh, for, in a couple of months time. Um, yep. when I've sort of fully committed, I'll be sort of going two or three days a week, that sort of thing. That's um, great. And then see how it goes. And, you know, in the long haul, run biggest analytics company in the world and hire 400 <laughs> people, right? That's that's wow. about yeah. five years time. I could do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's, you know, I, I look forward to it. Uh, I look forward to like you being a sponsor on the podcast because you're the biggest analytics company. Of course you would be at that point. So mm. <laughs> <laughs> that. that's, well, I like the ambition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's all this, uh, the blue sky thinking of getting ahead of myself. <laughs> no, I think it's, I think it's good. You have to, you have to, I have to think something like that in order to, to, to succeed, I think actually you have to have pretty pretty lofty goals because otherwise, um, when the do when the down times happen, then it's hard to you know fight through it. But if you have these goals, then it can help you get there. Yeah, absolutely. If at this stage I say right, well I'll only work two days a week, well I'll never progress. So um, if I can sort of think well a little bit now and then build up and you know what could the future be? Could I hire people or could I just take on more work or specialize in yep. or the other? So you know time will tell. It'll um, throw up its challenges but at the same time um yeah it'll be it'll be fun hopefully well i think that's it's, it's such a nice area to be in too because there's never there's a never-ending need for people who can make sense of all this data we're collecting because it's almost insatiable the amount of data that people want and that they collect and to be able to turn that into something useful is is an art form <laughs> and it, it's valuable it's very valuable and i think that companies at all sizes need it because you you had mentioned that you know in a, in a multinational company they didn't have a dedicated analyst yet there's a certain size of company certain like you know there's a certain type of company that already has an analytics department but there's many companies that need it but they don't know where to start and that might be where you can find your your niche as far as working with these people goes yeah absolutely Cool. I'm excited to hear how this develops. Like this is a cool, cool, cool <laughs> development, and it's probably exciting for you too. I mean, it's a very exciting to start a new business and to do something new and to have like this greenfield opportunity to make it whatever you want it to be. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes too. Um, that's almost like a great closing note, but we have a little bit of time. So going back to this 
area of like on the job learning and, and just getting buy-in and you had mentioned earlier what metrics should go to the CEO versus not, you know, who, what do they need to see? What detail they need? What do they care about? Let's talk about that a little bit. And that is just, how do you know that? How did you determine what is important to them? And did you do interviews? Did you just sort of trial and error? How did you get to the point where you know what, what people should be seeing? So I started with what they were already focusing on. Um, and then I, um, worked out which bits of that weren't actually helping them make any decisions, um, which bits were actually incorrect, so needed uh, to be something else so that they could actually make the right decisions on the right numbers. Um, and then also focusing on which numbers were able to give them the most relevant insights depending on their area of the business. So yeah, I sat down with everyone from the CEO to the marketing director, the head of e-commerce, various different people we did a little quiz you know which bits do you like um, of this report would you be interested in this that or the other if i displayed it in a different way would that make it easier or more confusing um so we rebuilt some reports from there and also um then gave a bit of ga training to them so that they could actually go to the right reports themselves um on an ad hoc basis rather than waiting for monday morning when the reports all came out they could check it a bit more frequently yep. um and then also educating their departments as to um you know channeling that data upwards and and making sure as they go that it was um right and that they understood it correctly in the way that they could then use it correctly so um, there was a particular example with the funnel, um, the checkout process, uh, where people sort of thought one of the steps of the funnel was actually slightly different, and actually it was the inverse to what it was. So hmm. uh, <laughs> that was um, that was a fun conversation, but it meant that we all sort of understood the customer journey better, and we could say, right, well, actually, you thought it was um, the the uh, an impact on what offers we were putting out there, but actually. Uh, the issue was something more to do with uh, the stages of the form, for example. So, yeah, it's, it's very different as to uh, if the number goes one way or the other, it really does impact one team or the other. So you've really got to know, you know which numbers overlap different teams and which ones um, certain teams can ignore and, and simplify it for them as well. Um, if you can make sure people aren't drowning, then they can actually... Uh, get the insight themselves um, and actually be confident in it and know that it is the right thing. So we tried to just pick a few little bits for each person or each team um, and that way they could focus on that and, and those were their KPIs or their metrics. You could work out for them then um, and help them work out which ones, um, when it went up, what was a good level um, and yeah, benchmark what was what success looked like and what a bad day looked like as well. Mm -hmm. I love it. Simplify, right? That's like simplify whatever is going on. Don't drown them in data. And, it, and really, that's the difference between reporting, which anybody can do and, and computers do that all the time. And like analysis, like an analyst, an analyst is somebody who does that, right? They do all the hard work to come up with that simple answer. So it's not about more data. It's about the right data. And it's about making decisions from it. Like what do these people need to make better decisions? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you just summarized what an analyst does in a, in a very concise way. And I think that's great because that's a lot of people aren't really sure as to what it means. Like they see something like an analyst or they see web analytics or Google analytics in a job description. And they think that it means that they need to know where to click in these tools or they need to, to do that. Well, that's, that's a part of it, obviously, if you can't navigate a tool or know what, what's capable, then, then that's not going to get you very far, but also that's just that's just table stakes, right? To know those things, it's really turning that into insights, turning that into something valuable for the organization, and that's the difference between a e-commerce company who might have a bunch of websites and they're they're successful, but they don't really know why they're successful all the time, right? They they can't really say off the top of their head what type of promotions should we run, what what are things that are working here, and that's where the analyst comes in to to be able to give them that answer so they can just do better business each time they move forward. Yeah, absolutely. And um, knowing knowing that is is absolutely critical. But also with the with the simple simplifying it, you know, yes to an, an analysts' job they have the whole thing. So I'm sure we work on the technical impl implementation, the troubleshooting, the basic reporting, and then so the the work is so varied. But then you get the day to just sit down and dig through all the data to find those five numbers that will make you the millions. 
well, or, mm-hmm. or few pounds or whatever it might be. But yeah, that's that's the balance is working out also the priorities on your job as an analyst or uh, yeah, a, a web analyst has to decide, right, do I fix the tracking here or can by analyzing, you know, these bits, can I make more money by looking at the data we have already or do I need to fix it? So that's that's always a fun balance, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. And then and it's where do you invest as well? I mean, because obviously everybody in the digital world is inundated with tools. Some of them cost a lot of money. Some of them are free, whatever it is. But which ones do you implement? And then where do you spend your time? Analytics helps you understand where you should be spending your time much more clearly than, than just about anything else. And so it's not about having the most horsepower, the most, the, the most expensive tool. It's about being able to answer that question is where should we be spending our efforts? Where are we going to get the best results? That's spot on. Yeah. If, if people have the best tool ever, you know, if, if they don't know exactly how to use it to the best of their abilities, then they might as well not have it. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Well, I think the tools tend to take credit for the results when it's really the people and that's, that's, you're showing that here, right? And that's, that's where, as you get into your own business, that's, that's sort of like how you can craft your messages that I can help you figure out what to look at. You can only look at the right things instead of everything. With that's a great doing. tagline. Thank you. I'll, uh, yes. I'll yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, obviously this, this is why we have this podcast is to just sort of help us all work through how do we, what are we doing here? <laughs> Cause there's so many, there's so many different phases and there's so many different things we could be doing. It's like, let's talk it through and figure out exactly what the right steps are. That does help. Yeah. When you, when you're working on your own in something, uh, you know, whether you're working for yourself or whether you're alone in a big pond of other people, you, um, yeah, sometimes you just need a good old conversation just to sort of Absolutely. go around the issues and work out where you're going, whether it's on topic or off topic, just talking things through is just so beneficial. Yeah. Well, that's, that's why, you know, that's why I like, that's why I like podcasts so much. I learn a lot from other people's podcasts. We do this one too. And then also these conferences that we're talking about, just going there and having a hallway conversation with somebody about whatever it is. It doesn't even have to be about analytics, just in general, um, just to see how they think about things, how people approach problems and just to sort of be around that is really contagious it makes you you know more motivated to do things yourself and it also helps bring that clarity that we're all looking for yeah definitely and actually that's one of the reasons i love um the event measure camp because um you can actually you know run a session so if you're actually looking for an answer to something or you want other people's ideas you can run a brainstorm session and then everybody just comes and contributes and nobody minds sharing ideas and you will just take away whatever's been said um and that i find really really good for inspiration and just sharing and, and understanding the true potential of both the people working in web analytics and the tool that we have available yeah measure camp love it it's, it's <laughs> awesome I've, I've only been to one just because it's hard to get there from the the US, but I know that there's measure camps all over the world now, which is really cool to see. Um, and obviously, Peter has done a great job with that organization, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, definitely. I think any, all, all events are good. But um, yeah, the specialist ones are pretty, pretty spot on. Yeah, I'll, I'll put a link to measure camp in the in the show notes as well. So people can check it out if they want to learn about it, or if they want to bring measure camp to their city. I know Peter O'Neill is looking for people to do that too. That would be great. Yeah. So working through ideas is, I like, I like that concept. Um, just a couple more things that I was wondering and, you know, just questions that I have is, do you have any advice that people gave you along the way that helped you really, helped really guide your career? And then if that's too hard to answer, which it is sometimes, is there any advice you have for the next generation of analysts, the next generation of people looking to get into this industry and looking to make something out of this? Um, I'd say there's a few things really, um, when you're starting out, it's an unknown industry. It is a niche industry still. Um, so one, just do it. There's not always a set plan. There's not an exact route to follow. It's not like you're getting into architecture where you have to follow a specific route. Um, you just have to try it and find your own way. Um, and then if you've got the right sort of head or you know which area you can do best at, then um, you don't have to have the experience already to, to have the job. You can, um, yeah, just pick it up from, from trial and error and just giving things a go. Um, most of what you could, what you do, you can sort of look at it and say, right, is this working or isn't it working? And then, um, and learn from that as you go. So it's a very flexible, um, and expanding industry. So, and, and it's, it's only getting bigger at the moment. So definitely just go for it. Great. Yeah, I agree. Go for it. I mean, there's nothing, you know, you, you have time to learn, right? 
some people who are pretty advanced in this area, but there's a lot of people, a lot of websites that have a lot of data that aren't doing anything with it. Yeah. So the stakes are are high long term, but they might be low short term because there's if there's it's better than nobody looking at it to have somebody look at it. So even if you don't have a ton of experience, you can get that experience on the job. Yeah, and whatever size website you're working on, you can still learn something. Um, and and if you don't think you're learning the right thing, then then build something yourself and learn from that. Yeah, exactly. And that's that's the thing you learn is as you get into analytics is that no single tool is a wonder tool. You know, Google Analytics is probably the close, the closest thing we have right now, but it's it's good at many things, but it may not be best in class at everything you need. And so you sort of you you learn what the strengths and weaknesses are, and then you might have a different tool for for A/B testing. You might have a different tool for uh, heat mapping. You might do a site serve. There's all kinds of different things you can do once you learn the strengths and weaknesses of it. And then also once you approach things from a business perspective, like asking answering a business question versus what can the tool do for me then you can really do a lot, right? You can you can do all kinds of different fun things at, at that point. Yeah, that's where it really opens up and, and, and means that it's more than just, oh, yeah, the website had 10 visits. You know, as, as it is in the very early days when you start with a little website, you know, you think, oh, Google Analytics tells me exactly how many visits, but it is so much more than a hit counter. <laughs> you know, yeah. when you've got the CEO saying, you know, well, what can I do to increase uh, revenue in this uh, product area or, you know, which of my uh, product categories is going to be able to grow the most over the next six months, when you've got those business questions, you know, you suddenly realize the value of what it is you're doing. Absolutely. I, I think that's a great way to put it. And it's also a good, good stopping point here. And that is to just to say that <laughs> if you can answer the business questions, that's when it really gets to be fun. Yeah. And I think that sounds like the, a summary of sort of how you got into analytics in general. And that is you liked doing the SEO stuff and everything, but then you wanted to answer bigger questions. You wanted to do get more challenges you wanted to go through more challenging things and that's really where analytics can take you mm, yeah excellent well is there anything else you wanted to to share with the with the group i know you already shared some some big news <laughs> uh, anything else you wanted to share before we sign off um well, no i'd just say watch this space uh hopefully um when i'm not in a in a very busy corporate world i'll be able to sort of get back to uh, the Twitter and the events and, uh, and actually, uh, yeah, engage in the community a bit more than I have done over the last year. Cause it feels like I've yeah. kind of dropped off a cliff a little bit, but uh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's all right. This will be the, the beginning of the, of the next step. So I'm looking forward to you having everybody listen to this and getting some feedback and then we'll share some links to, to your resources as well on our show notes page too. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much. All right. Thanks, Anna. Thank you. What an awesome time for Anna right now. She has an eight-month-old at home, and she's going to take the plunge and start her own business. I'm excited for her, and I can't wait to hear about all of her successes. It was also great hearing about how she was able to find a career in analytics, even when there are very few jobs available that require her talents in her local market. When that happens, you have to create your own opportunities. And Anna was able to do this by networking, speaking, and writing about her own experiences. We appreciate you sharing your story, Anna. For show notes, visit jefflytics.com slash Anna. G-A-U-I is so overwhelming. It's easy for a CEO to drown in. Instead of looking at everything, she can help you look at the right thing. Instead of looking at everything, she can help you look at the right thing. If you're stuck and really don't know where to, good old conversation usually would do. Should I fix the tracking? Should I use what I got? Find the balance, hit the sweetest spot. Should I fix the tracking or use what I got? Find the balance, hit the sweetest spot.